Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning to you all, all the way from Bali, Indonesia. Beautiful island. MashaAllah, laqata illa billah. And with me, none other than my brother Mufti Mink and Wa'il Ibrahim. Turn it to you. Bismillah. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We just uh, completed Salat al-Fajr a little bit earlier. You can hear the beautiful water here. It's okay. very quiet. It's and MashaAllah, nice. barakallah. Uh, you know, before everyone comes out, we are here. We are just here for one day, and inshallah, we have a beautiful event today. We ask Allah to grant us uh, acceptance. Mm. But you know, the, 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 the nature that Allah Almighty has created is amazing. It is so soothing. It actually helps an individual calm down. Imagine when you connect the dhikr of Allah it's with the creation of Allah. It's the time of the morning and calm. This is the time of the morning at Qaq. If you sit by yourself here, no one is around, and you just reset your eyes Qaq. Look at the sunrise. This is mind-blowing. Subhanallah. 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 You sit here for the first hour after Fajr, and that's it. It makes your day. You recite your word of the Quran, you recite your morning al Qaq. That makes not only your day, your entire year. Wa'il. Fatabarakallahu ahsan wa khalafi. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Beautiful morning, as the Mashaykh mentioned. But there's one thing always I remember, subhanAllah, whenever I come to, uh, to the beach at that, at that hour is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that the barakah in my ummah was made during the early hours of the day. So it's a reminder for all of us to seize this opportunity immediately after Fajr to stay with ourselves for a bit, to mention Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to make dua and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us all Jannah of Firdaus. Ameen, Ya Asbahna wa asbaha al-mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. SubhanAllah. Okay, one thing before we leave. We all know that there is one, one single supplication. If you say right now, if I happen to die today, the Prophet Sallallahu says, well guaranteed you will go straight to heaven. And uh, likewise in the evening, if you recite it in the evening, the evening which is, you know, before sunset. If you recite it and you expire on that night, you still go straight to heaven. To the extent that the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, named it, the master of the supplications for seek and forgiveness. I'm going to turn it to Mufti Mink. I believe he will be the best to explain. How come? Very simple recitation. Any child can memorize it, but it has a huge virtues. It takes you straight to heaven. Why? What is the big deal? You know, subhanAllah, Allah Almighty has kept great success in sincerity. Mm -hmm. The deeds and everything we say and do, the sincerity we have is what determines the power of what you are doing. So when you are sincere, s small words would actually be so impactful. Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Mm -hmm. La ilaha illa anta. There is none worthy of worship besides you. Khalaqtan, you made me. Oh, so it, number one, it begins with the acknowledgement of the oneness of Allah. It begins with the acknowledgement. That is the key to heaven. That is true. It starts with Tawheed. Mm. It starts with the fact that we worship Allah alone. You are my Lord. And mm. that's it. Mm. And, and on top of that, we don't just say, oh Allah, you are my Lord. But there is none worthy of worship besides you. La ilaha, you made me. So if you made me, you have the right to determine what I should do, what I should not do. Uh, you know, the do's and don'ts there. It's up to you to decide. And here I am. I'm your slave. And on top of that, I am your slave. Hmm. I'm totally under you. Subhanallah. Submission. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. No. I am upon this covenant, this promise that I have made to the best of my ability. And you are renewing the fact that I'm going to try my best with everything. So, renewing your covenant with Allah on a regular basis, morning and evening. Uh -huh. I seek refuge in you from every evil that you have created, from everything, uh, sorry, that I have made, yeah. from uh, every deed, every bad deed that I have done. Uh -huh. Every bad deed that I have done, I seek refuge in you from that. So, so we are seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Uh -huh. uh, number one, if Allah protects you from something, you'll be protected from it. Uh -huh. If Allah is not protecting you from something, you will end up doing it. And you will, so you ask Allah for protection, mm. no matter how powerful you are. Just like when you want to do something, you seek Allah's help to do it. It doesn't mean I'm powerful, I will do it with my own power. Ask mm. Allah's help. So, أعوذ بك من كل شر ما صنعت أبو أولك بنعمتك علي When you acknowledge the gift of Allah upon you. Mm. I'm fully acknowledging what Allah Almighty has given me. Mm. Uh, 
ابو لك بنعمتك علي وابو بذنبي ان اي ام اكنولوجينج ماي سن ذير از نو بوينت ذير از ا سيكريت ويتش از بيجن الله فور فورجيفنس افتر ادميتين يو سن افتر ادميتين يو سن اف يو دونت ادميت ذا سن ذير از نو فورجيفنس ذس واي وي ساي دوز هو جاستيفاي سن ذير از نو تشانس فور ذيم تو سيك فورجيفنس اوف الله ذس از واي دي ساي ا بدعه از ورس ذان ا بيرسون هو داز سمثينغ رونغ نوينغ ذس از رونغ اند هي وون بي فورجيفن از لونغ از يو دونت اكنولوج يس وين يو نو وات اي ام دوينغ از رونغ then you will say, oh Allah, forgive me. But if you think what you're doing is right and it is wrong, when are you going mm-hmm. to seek the forgiveness of Allah? Mm-hmm. So that's why we ask Allah to guide us. Uh, so forgive me because there is none uh, to forgive sins besides you. Amazing. No one. So Amazing. It all begins it. with the acknowledgement of the one is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ends also the acknowledgement. Acknowledgement of one's the, own. He's sin. the only one who forgives. So humbleness and you know uh, the lack of arrogance mm-hmm. in our hearts that can grant humility. us humility. Shown humility, full submission, and move the mint. May Allah bless him. Said something very beautiful. Showing your weakness before Allah, and I can never do it without you. I can never achieve it without your help. I can never quit sins and overcome you know my inner desire without your help and assistance. It reminds us with what Yusuf alayhi salam, who was the purest pure, uh, prophet, and he says when those women try to seduce him, وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَهْلِينَ He didn't give himself the credit saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm strong, man. He said, if you do not word of their evil for me, the attempts to seduce me, Allah. I would end up yielding. Allahumma thabbitna. The Quran says, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ لَقَدْ تَتَرْكَنُ إِلَيْهِمْ Had we not been the ones who strengthened you upon this, there was, you know, you would have fallen for something, for, for it. Mm-hmm. You know, something that's very interesting that I remember now, when we say you must admit and acknowledge your sin, we are speaking about acknowledging it to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't go to another human or another thing or something else and acknowledge to them and think that if I acknowledge to this person, Allah will forgive me. You acknowledge to Allah. You are a slave of Allah. لا يغفروا الذنوب إلا أنت. Direct contact. Yes. contact with Allah. If you so, allow me, um, you know, not everyone have an access to actually um, recite this long list of azkar, which is not much, by the way. It maximum takes 15 minutes. Subhanallah. But subhanallah, also the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, give us an access to what we call it a shortcut. Short, uh, I'm sorry, shortcut, shortcut. So a shortcut, access to uh, a simple dua, simple recitation. If you recite it, he still get a huge word. When he left for Fajr prayer and he returned, he found his wife, beautiful wife, Juwariya bint al-Harith, was still sitting until it was after, uh, you know, the forenoon. They said, you said, sitting there, what are you doing? She said, been making tasbih and that. He said, I said one statement three times, you know, it equals all what you've been doing. What is it? They say, subhanallah, ya bihamdihi, adada khalqi, wa rida'a nafsi, wa zinata arshi, wa midada kalimati. You're going to turn it to what you tell me. How great is it and why? Subhanallah. So before I uh, go into the dua, Shaykhna, is that, does that mean that it is okay for us to do a shortcut that is leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing I want to tell you. Yes, please. Uh, I think my voice can reach. You know, when we were young and we watched uh, Open Sesame and the cave and full of gold, all of us, all of us were exception, thinking about how much can I take? So imagine you enter that cave which is full of jewels, uh, gems, diamonds, expensive stuff, gold and silver. Of course you want to take the whole thing. You want to take, you want to carry with you the whole thing. But sometimes you don't have a right. Sometimes you don't have the means to carry everything. So what do you choose? مَا خَفَّ وَزْنُهُ وَغَلَى ثَمَنُهُ It is something similar to that. Sometimes you have an exam, you have a it, business it, it meeting. something light and valuable. Exactly. The, the, the biggest value things. You know, if you're going for the kill, take the most valuable thing that you can quickly go, go away with. But it doesn't mean that you should neglect the rest. I mean, if I have the means to take everything with me, I will. If I can pay a night, every night, if I can fast on every day. It, it, it reminds me of, it reminds me of how when the hadith is, تعادلوا ثلث القرآن, 
قول هو الله احد سوره اخلاص از ايكوفلنت تو ا كوتر اوف ا ثيرد اوف ذا قران ات دوز نوت مين ذات يو فورجيت ذا ريست اوف ذا قران اند يو جست كيب اون ريدينغ ذس 3 تايمز افري داي بس ذات مينز اولسو ذير از نو اكسكيوز ناو فور اني ون هو سي لايك اتس تو ماتش تو ماتش الله سبحانه وتعالى ثرو هيز بروفيت جيف اس ذوز شورت كاتس سبحان الله يا رب هاري اول ذا جيمز تيك اول ذا جولز ذا شورت كات اند ذا لونج ونز And actually, um, that, that to add the truth of the Quran, if I can add, mm. it, it, it also the, some of the scholars say that you know what it is because it has in it Tawheed, and a third of the Quran is filled with Tawheed. This is exactly right. So some exactly people right. think, oh, if the Hadith says it's third of Quran, let me read it thrice and it's done. See, but doesn't decrease the value of the rest of the Quran. You have to still give value to the entire Quran. It says, uh, for example, doing uh, uh, Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to Hajj with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. If that is the case, can someone come in Ramadan, just do Umrah and go away and forget about I did Hajj with the Prophet? Habibi, do you know how the Prophet ﷺ said, Everyone will find it easy to do what Allah has created him for. There are some people who are pure business mind mentality. They're very good at it. They make money out of the sand. MashaAllah. <laughs> as long as they're making it out of halal and helping, I know people helping thousands of families. You and I yeah. have visited some brother who on daily basis, he feeds 2,000 people by the grace of Allah. Yeah. So when this person, his schedule is very tight and mashallah, he's working hard. He's feeding people, sponsoring orphans, miskin, widows and so on. And I ask him, so how many para did you read today? And uh, how many rak'ah did you pray of the nawafil? So he's not like the sheikh. Mashallah, you have all night long to pray. And read books, read azkar, and so on. So there is also an easy access to obtain your share of the goodness. You know the hadith, ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور. The the poor companions came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم complaining. He said, "What is wrong?" They said, "Ya Rasulullah, ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور. Who are أهل الدثور? The wealthy people. The wealthy companions. They have harvest all their work, and you know, were lagging behind. He said, "And how is that?" They said, "Ya Rasulullah, they pray as we pray." They fast as we fast, and they uh, do Hajj as we do, and they have some surplus. They give in sadaqah and we don't we receive yes. yes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, "Let me guide you to something. If you do, no one can beat you in this regard." What is it? After every prayer, just say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, thirty three yes. times. This is better than all what they give in sadaqah. So when the rich companions learn about it, tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they would do it as well to say, "Okay, now we are above you." Yeah. Because now we are also doing this, subhanAllah. Yeah. They came back protesting. They said, yeah, so he said, what now? They said, now our rich companions also started doing the same. Oh, what did he say? <laughs> A man who can combine all of that is excellent. So that's why to use whatever Allah has made easy for you to get Jannah is up to you. You must make sure everyone is gifted differently. The basics and the farad that we cannot compromise. But besides that, whatever you can do in terms of your capacity, your qualification, your ability, your mohiba, your your gift that you have, use it to get the, to closer and closer to yeah. Allah Subhanahu. The hadith, yeah. the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about uh, the Sunnah of Salat al Fajr, the two rakah performed before the obligatory yeah. act, rakat yeah. al Fajr, khairum min al dunya wa dunya wa So the two rakah is performed before the obligatory Fajr prayer. Is better than the whole world and what's in it. So, how much more the reward of Fajr itself Imagine will be? Mashallah. This beautiful island. Mashallah. This is just an island. Mashallah. Have you prayed Fajr, alhamdulillah, on time before sunrise? And have you prayed the Sunnah? The two units yeah, before yeah. Fajr, better than not this island, rather yeah, the whole world. Hollywood, uh, Orange County. Whatever anyone I'm considers, so you know, wow. I, It's better than all of it. You were telling us about that hadith. Yeah, uh, the, the, dhikr, the dhikr uh, that uh, Dr. Salah mentioned earlier, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. So the dhikr starts with glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledging that all praise due to him alone. But how many times you can go for this? Adada khalqihi, the number of his creation, Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Which is unlimited, of course, we cannot number. Yani, bismillah. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. How many drops of sands in this hand? Oh, no one can count. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Maybe this is this is also the creation of Allah. So when you say "Ada the Khalqi," that of which we know, and that which we have no clue about. You know how many youth call and ask, "Uncle, are there aliens?" Of course, there are aliens. 
There are creations Allah Almighty said, وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah. And He creates what you know not, what you have no clue about. Our earth planet is like a drop in an ocean, a dot compared Actually, to the sun. The earth is like one of these grains. Recently, they're discovering with the James Webb Telescope millions of other planets and hmm. stars around. Habibi, so you call it multiverse, huh? It's actually billions yes. of planets and galaxies, hundreds of them, mashaAllah. So we literally like this. Man. You know, Which I am very, very fascinated by this uh, discovery of the James Webb Telescope. If anyone wants to check it out, you can check out the James Webb Telescope. Look at what they are they're discovering. They have launched it a million miles away from this Earth. And they are discovering planet after planet. And there are galaxies like ours. Galaxies like ours being discovered right now. And we were here a few years ago thinking it's just these few planets. La so la the praises of Allah as equal to as many times as the number of the creation, creation. of Allah that which we know of which we have, which no, we clue have no clue about Allah. please Wa nafsihi. now correct me about the translation shit and the level of Allah's satisfaction about himself as much as it will make him happy as much as it will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased subhanallah Wa nafsi wazina ta'arshihi and the weight as heavy as the weight of his throne Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa midada kalimatihi No, 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 don't oh, go okay. to the midada kalimatihi, okay. speak about the arsh Oh, Allahu Akbar <laughs> Allah Speak about the arsh Allah. Sheikh Mink spoke about, you know, mashaAllah, the galaxies, billions of plants and galaxies You know, and the hadith says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah has never created anything bigger than the throne and you know the greatest ayah in the Quran is at al kursi 255, chapter number 2, right? Why is it the greatest ayah? It's talking about the, the, the glory of the Almighty Allah and it says, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ His kursi has encompassed the heavens, not uh, this uh, worldly heaven, which encompasses all the billions of galaxies and planets Beyond and the stars. Space, right? Yes, and the earth. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ الْأَرْضِ What is Al-Kursi? It is not the Al-Arsh. Pedestal. Yeah, it is the footstool. And the, the Prophet Sallallahu said the, the Al-Kursi compared to Al-Arsh is like a, a ring person. thrown in the desert. Wow. So it's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling, mind-blowing. Then how big is Al-Arsh? It is the biggest creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ever. And inshallah, <laughs> when we all enter Jannah, uh, inshallah, inshallah, we ask Ameen. Allah to be in Al-Fadaws Al-A'la. To be an al Fadaus al A'la, which is the highest, the topmost part of Al Jannah, the Prophet said, Whenever you ask Allah for him and ask him for Al Fadaus al A'la, فإنه أعلى الجنة وأوسطها وسقفه عرش الرحمن. The Arsh, which we're talking about, will be the rooftop of Al Fadaus. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Subhanallah, you'll be hamdi with that intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills our scale of good deeds as heavy as the creation of al arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa midada kalimatihi shaykh I will never get a better translation than yours inshallah oh no no here you got the mic you got the mic there you are know, two references in the Quran subhanallah midad midad the, 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 the stretching the, the length with the stretching of all his words subhanallah all his signs all his words everything this entire dua is actually praising Allah equivalent to everything he has made and the, up to when he will be pleased and stretching beyond all his words meaning to, to the to the tune of all Unlimited his words. Unlimited praises. Subhanallah. Unlimited I, praises. I, when you lifted the sand a few minutes ago one handful and I'm thinking imagine every single grain of sand in that dua you are saying oh Allah subhanallah wa bihamdihi as per each one of these grains dropping here. That is something amazing subhanallah. Something that we can never and, achieve and, physically. And, and you want to know how much are the midad of the kalamat of Allah? Uh, in Surah Al-Kahf, for instance, the Almighty Allah says, Kullu. Kullu Look at the bahr. This is one sea. But the word al-bahr here refers to all the seas and oceans, rivers, uh, and ponds on exists. earth. All the water that exists on earth, which represents about 80%. Yes. Okay? The word midad refers to the ink, which we use the bamboo 
in order we dip it in the ink pot so we write if all the water on earth turn into ink so we sharpen all the trees into pins and we dip and we keep writing writing what the traits of allah the beauty of allah the praises of allah the countless blessings of Allah if you ever try to estimate and count the blessings of Allah never will you be able to, to keep count so all this water would be depleted but the words of Allah will not be depleted and his signs and his grandeur never depleted the water will be depleted the, the trees will be depleted. Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرُ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ Like Dr. Muhammad said, if every tree was a pen, every tree was a pen, and all the water on earth was actually ink, that would, the ink and the pens and would be depleted, but the kalimat Allah are not depleted. There are maybe uh, people, Shaykhna online, sorry to interrupt, who maybe uh, never heard that dua before, that dhikr before, so I wanted to repeat it one more time, inshallah. We'll write it down. And we write and down in also the in the description. Arabic and the meaning. But the pronunciation, inshallah, for those who are listening, maybe you can start writing maybe the transliteration so that you can memorize it, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zina ta'arshihi, wa midada kalimati. Yeah, he sounds better. I forgot he used to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, last but not the least, because it's already sun rising. Says who that the shiyukh and those who are in the field of da'wah, they don't enjoy their lives. We do not only enjoy our lives in vacationing and going swimming and horseback riding. Sometimes we publish that and we show the viewers to tell them that we, along with our families, alhamdulillah, we are extremely happy. Happy even when we get stranded at the airport. Yes, and we don't swim like that, Sheikh. <laughs> happy. Whenever we are being afflicted, whenever we're being tested, whenever we're being in, in very hardship, because it's all from Allah, being content with Allah's decree and decision. And also whenever we have an opportunity like that, alongside with the da'wah, we enjoy. But we reflect upon the magnificent, beautiful creation of Allah. So may Allah fill all our hearts with joy, delight and happiness. And have a beautiful, beautiful morning. For all of you, not only morning, morning, evening, and every day, may Allah make it to you. Allah. MashaAllah, you will probably be in different time zones, and you probably will see this uh, at different times. May Allah bless you wherever you are. The greatness of Allah is such that we have no option but to surrender to Him completely, to worship Him alone. And inshallah, we will meet with Him in the hereafter, in Jannah al Fibra. Allahum barakallahu wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.